I've had it with nobody knowing how to use marksman rifles properly. Because honestly, it's costing all of you guys very winnable games. So today I'll go over every marksman weapon in the game and how to use them. All the way from their stats to small tips and tricks to make sure that you get the most out of them. And I also went through a lot of data to get you guys the most up-to-date use of marksman scopes. Let's dive into it. Starting off with the pretty confusing to use but very underrated marksman rifle, we have the 3030 repeater. This heavy ammo marksman rifle packs a heavy punch with 42 damage per shot with the ability to charge it up, peaking at the damage per second at 97 when spam firing. The charge up mechanic makes it ideal for poking over long ranges, especially if you're holding a position, as unlike all other marksman rifles in this video, the 3030 is incredibly ammo efficient when fired one charge up shot at a time, as instead of doing 42 damage, it will deal up to 57 damage instead. It can even be equipped with a skull piercer, turning a charged up headshot to up to 120 damage. Something that's great about the 3030 is that it's very dynamic. It's in your best interest to take that extra moment, Line up the shot as you charge up by aiming down sights, as as soon as you hit the first bullet, this will stagger the enemy, deal extra damage, and allow you to fire away at full rate of fire to knock him with some spammy shots. The 3030 starts off with 6 bullets when picked up from the ground, it can be equipped with a purple magazine to upgrade it all the way to 12 bullets per magazine. It also comes pre-equipped with a dual loader, meaning that reloading replenishes the 3030 by 2 bullets per reload animation repetition. You don't have to wait until the magazine is empty to reload, but can keep reloading after shooting one, or I guess more efficiently, two shots. The 3030 doesn't have any bulky model or anything, but you can clean up your sight picture a little bit, specifically through removing this screw by equipping the Wild West or Bullet Train skins. While you can use it with Iron Sights, the 1X Holo or 1X HCOG, especially if your squint game is strong, you're better off equipping the 3030 with any types of marksman scope, with a huge emphasis on the longer range options such as the 3x Ranger or the 2-4x Dynamic Scope to enable the full range of the 3030. The 3030 being a heavy ammo rifle has some pretty heavy bullet trajectories, only really remaining at the hit scan range for about 50 meters. And obviously hit scan range meaning how far you can shoot a target without having to start leading your shots or compensating for bullet drop. And the bullets travel obnoxiously slow with a pretty heavy bullet drop. When we take a look at the scopes, the 1-2 to times sight when zoomed in has two markers, with the upper cross showing the range at 400 meters and the bottom cross around 500 to 600 meters. When it comes to the 2 times sight, the 4 marker marks 400 meters, obviously. Middle marks 500 meters and the 6th marker over 600 meters away. As for the 3x Ranger, the first marker shows 300 meters, the second marker 400 meters, the third marker shows around 500 meters, and the fourth marker around 550 meters. As for the 2 to 4 times dynamic, the top of the chevron line marks 300 meters, then when you hit the first dot, it's 450, and the bottom is about 600 meters. Once you zoom in the 2 to 4x, the top mark shows about 300 meters away, and the bottom mark about 400 meters away. Keep in mind that when it comes to Apex's scopes, the marks will automatically adjust depending on height, whereas in real life you'd have to take that into consideration. In Apex, all you have to mind is the distance. You can hit fire with the 3030 in a very close range by standing still or starter stepping right when you're about to fire. Starter stepping is a technique where you move one side but then counter that movement with a strafe in the complete opposite direction. When doing this, there's a small window between where your character is about to stop moving and turns the other direction, where you will have standstill accuracy. But you generally don't benefit from this in Apex other than when you are hip-firing single-fire weapons. For obvious reasons, you can't really reload cancel with the 3030, which normally is when you start to reload, then you swap back and forth between your guns as soon as the ammo counter in the corner updates. But it's still good to notice for later, so bear with me. When it comes to power spikes, the 3030 instantly hits its near peak as soon as you find any type of magnification sight, with emphasis on the longer ranges. Sure, it can benefit from V over attachments, but the fast reload nullifies the immediate need for a high capacity magazine, the sniper stock does lower aim drift, but the 3030 doesn't really have that much to begin with, and the skull piercer is more of a novelty if you do hit headshots, rather than an immediate upgrade to the gun. It is just a solid gun that keeps getting better as soon as you find yourself a sniper scope. Thanks to the 3030 taking heavy ammo, it's a lot easier to keep it replenished as you rotate or end up fighting throughout the game, but I would still recommend carrying 2-3 to three stacks of heavy ammo depending on your inventory and overall team economy. And while the 3030 is amazing for economy, the same cannot be said for the triple take. This marksman, or should I say the best shotgun, is pretty strong on drop, especially when you're looking for impressive face clan worthy highlight shots. It's pretty unique in the way it fires three shots in the same direction at the same time, making it perfect for racking up damage in close range engagements. 
and even being a little bit more forgiving than the typical marksman weapon thanks to its larger projectile size. But once you start hitting the long to mid ranges, it loses out on value as you need to wait for the choke before doing any decent damage. The triple take deals 21 damage per projectile and as it fires free at a time, up to 63 damage for a body shot. If you fire at max rate of fire, you can deal up to 85 damage per second, but keep in mind that the triple take only deals the full 63 damage without a choke up to about 63 meters away for a normal target, after which you need to start charging up your shots by aiming down sights. The choke has two stages, one early and one final stage. The first stage, almost right after you aim down sights, makes a triple take accurate to about 80 meters away, and when fully charged, it will remain effective as long as you'll hit your shots. This means that you'll need to aim down sights and charge up the choke after a target is 80 meters or farther away. You're obviously more likely to hit a target if you don't use the choke, as the projectiles will be more spread out, but obviously you won't be doing any game-changing damage. That being said, it can be worth spam firing to get the lucky shot in if the target is at extremely low health. The triple take starts off with an 18 round magazine, but as it takes 3 bullets per shot, in reality it's more of a 6 round magazine and can be upgraded to 27 or I guess 9 rounds with a level 3 magazine. And you might wonder, if it takes 3 shots to fire, what happens if you only have 2 or 3 bullets left in a magazine? Simple, it doesn't let you shoot. The triple take has some okay looking skins, but the default skin is already as good of an advantage as you can get. Stay clear of equipping certain legendary skins as they make the scope a lot more bulky, such as the Tame Beast. And although it does make it cleaner, I don't recommend using the one-time sights with the triple take, as these actually have less magnification than just aiming down the iron sights in the first place. In a way, the iron sights are kind of their own sights, and it's safe to say that they hold their own. Instead, you're going to want to look for sights like the 2x Bruiser, the 3x Ranger, or the 2 to 4x magnification scopes. On account of being an energy weapon, the triple take has very low bullet drop. It's slow to charge, but at least you don't need to account for the projectile ballistics, nearly as much as any other marksman rifles. It is a bit of a weird trade-off with some decently slow projectile speed, but again, almost no bullet drop. It stops being hit scan range about 50 meters away, after which the slow projectile speed starts kicking in. You can see how good this bullet drop is just by looking at the scope. If you don't have a sight, you have three marks. The number one mark comes in at 250 meters, the number two at 375, and the third mark marks in for targets 800 meters away. As for when you zoom in with the 1 to 2 times, the top line marks in at 775 meters. When it comes to the 2 times, the 4 marker shows 750 meters. With the 3 times, the first dot shows 450 meters and the second dot shows 800 meters. And after that, it's just too far away. We couldn't actually test this in the fire range. When it comes to the 2 to 4x, the top marker marks 450 meters and the middle 775. And if you zoom in, the top line shows 350 meters, the middle shows 450 meters, and the bottom 775. When it comes to close range fights, you're better off relying on quick scoping than actually hip firing with the triple take. While the bullets are pretty much the same every time, the spread is very wide, and you stop hitting all three pellets as soon as 10 meters away. Unlike the 3030, you can hit fire without any special stutter stepping or the like. Reload cancelling with the triple take will save you about 290 milliseconds. So for power spikes, I'd argue that the triple take hits its most important power spike right after you pick it up, and it immediately loses value the closer you get to the mid game. Adding attachments makes it a little bit more useful, but it's near useless before you even get into the late game, in part due to its slow fire rate, mid tier damage, poor ammo efficiency, and of course ammo availability, because where are you going to find energy ammo in the later stages of the game? Next up is the bow kick, I'm gonna keep saying it that way, compound bow, which has undergone a lot of changes, but still remains the peak marksman weapon in the game with a massively high skill rating. This bow comes with some risk to use, but pays off a lot with the incredible high damage and knock potential. It deals 25 to 70 damage per arrow, depending on how far back you pull the string, dealing 75 damage per second at the lowest power, and 107 if you fire it at max power using the built-in Dead Eyes tempo, which you will trigger by pulling the string back and releasing it within a few moments of it being fully drawn back. The tempo speeds up to max speed after the second time you properly tempo the string, and can then be rapidly fired at the same tempo until you break the pace or run out of ammo. There's actually some indicators that help you use the Dead Eyes tempo. First off, there's the audio indicator, which is the sound of the string making a pop sound the second you draw the string back fully. Then you have a visual indicator on the bow itself. On the right side, these grooves start filling out, and when it's fully filled out, they will also light up, 
indicating that you are at max power. These visual indicators are also visible if you've equipped any scope, and as a matter of fact, the scope will also tell you how many Deadeye stacks you've procced as well. Not only that, but if you hip fire, your HUD will also give you a visual indicator of the bow's power and your Deadeye's stacks. The bow also comes with shadow caps equipped, which makes your hipfire turn into a burst of arrows, sort of like a shotgun. One hit with the shadow caps deal 84 damage per burst, and it can deal 105 damage per second when spam firing, or 129 damage per second. Fun fact, despite not actually coming with a magazine, by using an inspect animation you can see the legend you're playing, inspecting the bow kick, taking out a magazine, and weighing it which is some pretty cool extra animation. Maybe it was supposed to have a magazine in development. While the bow kick doesn't have the highest raw damage per second out of the marksman, once you master the dead eyes tempo, it may just be the deadliest of them all, with the highest 70 damage per arrow stacking up real quick if you catch an enemy in the open. And the first shot can easily be followed up by a second, by a third, and you can just keep on going until you completely run out of arrows. Theoretically, a player could clear an entire endgame without ever needing to stop, but as far as I'm aware, we haven't seen any place like that yet. As far as I'm aware, there are no pay to win or pay to lose skin for the bow kick because there's barely any to begin with. I don't recommend using the iron sights or the one times in general and would recommend any of the other magnification sights for it, such as the one to two times, the two times bruiser or the three times ranger. The bow kick cannot be equipped with the two to four times. As far as the ballistics go, the bow kick is an almost opposite of the triple take with a very fast projectile speed, but the harsher bullet drop, it has a hit scan range of about 50 to 60 meters. When taking a look at the scopes, the one to two times when zoomed in top mark leads for 200 meters and the bottom 375. As for the two times bruiser, the first mark shows 250 meters, second mark 300 meters, and the third mark 375. As for the three times ranger, the first mark shows 150 meters, second mark shows 175, the third mark shows 250 meters, and the fourth mark shows 275. And obviously the actual marker in the middle, that's the hit scan range, so 50 to 60 meters in this case. So generally 50 meters on all marksmen. The bow kick is currently in the care package, so obviously it's gonna hit a power spike at the very start once you get it, but when it is ground loot, you will hit a big power spike early game, and an even bigger one once you find any of the magnification scopes, especially the three times ranger. Getting shatter caps isn't that big of a deal, you can make big damage without anything else. The bow kick remains relevant into the late game, and even when it isn't ground loot, you can pick up already fired arrows off of your enemies or even the ground. The bow kick at the moment is very rare, but it has a very high effective damage potential. Let's take a look at the last marksman in this video, which happens to have the highest raw damage per second out of them all. And that is the G7 Scout. While it only deals 32 damage per body shot, it can be fired as fast as 240 rounds per minute, adding up to about 4 rounds per second, dealing a total of 128 damage per second by spamming the trigger. It can also be equipped with a double tap trigger, which makes you fire 2 shots in an instant instead of fully automatic. And after some further testing, and I guess as a reward for you watching this far, I've found that in the case of the scout, the double tap doesn't actually lower your overall RPM. If anything, it seems to be a little bit faster. It also has a overall lower recoil, with half of the muzzle climb as when you're using fully automatic. As such, contrary to popular belief, you're going to want to equip and use double tap whenever you get your hands on a G7 Scout. Other than the double tap, the Scout doesn't have much of a gimmick, it's simply a spammable, long distance marksman rifle that eats through your ammo. However, I don't recommend firing at the full 240 RPM, and instead pacing your shots just a little bit in full auto, as this gives you a chance to keep your recoil on the down low. The G7 Scout comes with 10 bullets in the magazine and can be upgraded all the way to 20 with a purple magazine, leading up to 640 damage per full magazine if you can control your shots, and making it one of the most high damage potential marksman rifles. The G7 Scout has terrible iron sights, and you should avoid using them unless you're absolutely forced to. There used to be a pay to win skin that helped with poor sight picture and visual clutter, which was the attrition skin, but it has since been fixed. So okay Otter, if the iron sights are bad, should you hip fire instead? Experts say no. Not only does the G7 Scout have terrible iron sights, but the hip fire is just as unreliable. If you're in a situation where you are forced to hip fire, switching to your secondary is going to give you a better chance of survival, even if your secondary is out of ammo. 
With that in mind, any other sight than the Iron Sight is a massive upgrade for the G7 Scout, but as it is a marksman, you'll want something with magnification, such as the 1-2x, 2x Bruiser, 3x Ranger, or 2-4x Scopes. I've said that so many times today, you don't even know. The G7 Scout has a hitscan range for up to about 60 meters and doesn't really have that hard of a bullet drop or bullet time within the first few hundred meters, but it certainly starts to fall off hard after the 500 meter mark. When it comes to scopes, if you zoom in with the 1 to 2 times, the first line marks 175 meters and the bottom line marks 600. As for the 2 times Bruiser, the 4 marker shows 375 meters, the middle marker 475 meters and the 6 marker 550. As for the 3 times Ranger, the first mark shows 300, second mark 450, third mark 500, fourth mark 600. As for the 2 to 4 mark, the top of the chevron shows 300 meters, the first mark is 475 and the bottom mark is 600. If you zoom in with the 2 to 4 times, the top chevron will be 200 meters, first mark 300 meters, and second mark 450. Now, reload cancelling with the G7 Scout is one of the best reload cancels in the game, and was frequently used when players were going for the Scout of Action world record. A proper G7 Scout reload cancel is comparatively easy to do, and will save you about 560 milliseconds, over half a second per reload cancel. When it comes to power spikes, the G7 Scout instantly hits one when it finds a sight, especially any type of magnification scope, and hits another very crucial power spike once you get a barrel stabilizer, as this helps you mitigate the random jumps of the recoil. Other than that, it increases in value every new attachment and becomes increasingly viable into the late game as the range of engagement closes, because the Scout shines the most within the 200 to 400 meter ranges. The light ammo is also super easy to come by, but you're probably going to want to carry three to four stacks of light ammo for it depending on your playstyle because holding a position obviously means you need more ammo as you will be doing a lot of poking and very little looting but what if you want to fight an enemy that's closer than that if you guys want to learn how to use every smg check out the video on the screen thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all tomorrow